Howdy ho neighbors, it's Cody here with Secondhand Farms and today we're working on this John Deere 737 Z-Track with a 23 horse Kawasaki V-Twin. It runs great but it has a tick in the top end and that's because the valves are loose. So that's what we're going to do today. You might think setting the valves sounds a little overwhelming but it's actually pretty simple and it takes relatively few tools that most everyone has. You'll need a 10 millimeter wrench will work too because all you're doing is taking off the valve cover with it. A 14 millimeter wrench, this does need to be a wrench because that's the size that's on the retainer nut for the rocker arms. A set of cheap filler gauges that has a five thousandths blade on it. A three millimeter Allen wrench. You could do it with an Allen socket but I have an Allen wrench just because that's a lot going on in your hands at once and to me that's just easier to hold on to and a 13 16 spark plug socket let's get started all right so first off I've already pulled my, my spark plugs out with my spark plug socket just to make it easier to turn around and so I can find top dead center or TDC as some call it you'll take your 10 millimeter and you'll take your Two, nut, or two, two screws off of your valve cover and uh, you'll also want to order a set of new valve cover gaskets because um, like this one I tore it up taking it off nine times out of ten you're gonna tear them they're cheap it's not worth the fight of siliconing it on and then having to clean silicone off later so just order a new set you'll thank yourself later so I got that off then here's your valves you have your exhaust valve and your intake valve. Now I'm doing this cold because that's the way the service manual says to have it. Some service manuals have a tolerance for warm and cold. And cold on this particular engine, and I may misspeak, but I do believe that just about all Kawasaki's are four thousandths to six thousandths. That is point zero zero four inches to 0 0.006 inches. So usually what I do in a case like that is, is I shoot right for the middle for five, 0 0.005, five thousandths of an inch. Now, this is just where it was setting when I shut it off and the exhaust side is tight. The intake side is loose. But what we wanna do is, is we wanna roll the engine up till this one is up on top dead center, TDC, one, Oh, I say one. I'm not sure if this side's one or two, but it doesn't matter. As long as it's on TDC compression. When it's on TDC compression, both of these valves will be closed. So how this one is loose now, this valve is closed. But this one is partially opened. When it's on TDC compression, both of these will be loose. So, what I do is, is I will roll the engine around yep see the exhaust valve is moving it's closing so it is on the exhaust stroke so the exhaust is going to close now the intake is opening about or the cylinder is going down this is the intake stroke it's going down and now it's closing okay so now that it's closing we're getting close I'm going to take the dipstick and stick it down in the cylinder hole. You want to be real careful because if you if it binds, stop because you've got it crooked and you're going to tear something up. You have to be really, really gentle. Don't hold pressure on this. Just hold it where it can push up. Now you turn it. Okay, see the valve's closing. We were all the way at the bottom. Now watch that dipstick as it goes up. It's going up because the cylinder's going to the top. All right, right about getting close. All right, right there. I can feel it kind of break over. Now I don't know of any timing marks on these engines, so this is close enough. Right there, you could feel it right as it breaks over, right before it starts coming back down. We're at top dead center. We should be. Yep, loose on that one. Yep, loose on that one, and those are very loose because that is nowhere close to five thousandths. 
just for fun. Yeah, that's that's very loose. That was our noise for sure. All right, now these are a little bit backwards from what you might think. The nut on the outside actually adjusts your clearance here, and then the Allen in the middle is what tightens it and jams it and makes it stay. So what we do here is, is we'll take our five thousandths feeler gauge and we'll stick it in here and then just to, just to about where it's snug you just want just a little bit of resistance on it you don't want very much because that's too tight so That feels pretty good right there. We'll take that and hold it. And turn around with this box in. We'll hold it with the wrench and then we'll take our Allen and stick in here and tighten it down. You want to make sure you don't turn your nut too much or it's going to be too tight or too loose. So now that is just about right. It's a little bit loose. I'll adjust this other one and see how it is. And I may, I may tighten this one a little bit more. So do the same on this one. Come over here, tighten up our nut, tell our feeler gauge. Do it backwards so the camera can see. So, tighten it where there's just a little bit of drag. And now, hold it with the wrench. Tighten it with the Allen. Now, that's not a real big Allen, so you don't want to get real crazy with it. Yeah, see that's it's a little loose. Sometimes you have to uh, have to do it a couple of times until you're trying to kind of get the feel of of what it's going to need. And it's all of them are a little bit different. Like I said, this one actually sets. Normally, you turn the center, and that's what your set is, and, or your adjustment is, and then your set is the nut around it. But this is actually backwards from that, so. So we'll intentionally go a little tight here. So then when we tighten it up, should be pretty close to what we're wanting. Yeah, that's better. Let's go ahead and readjust this side just a little bit. Like I said, that's, this is why I like having an Allen because you're shuffling so much stuff in your hands at once. It can get a little, <laughs> little hectic trying to hold this and turn that and not turn that and, you know, fun stuff. So anyways, that feels maybe just a little bit snugger than I would leave it. But when I tighten that Allen down, it's going to loosen up some. So go ahead do that. How's that? Oh, yeah, that's that's a lot better. All right, so that's all that takes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this other side, but you do it exactly the same way. You'll roll it around until both of these are loose. And then uh, check it with your feeler gauges and set it. And you're done all right so got the other side all adjusted up and it was just as loose as this side um, which is just as well because it's been just as long since that side's been uh, been adjusted as this one now there's nothing wrong with an engine needing the valves adjusted that's just a preventative maintenance thing a um, little wear here a little wear there between the cam the followers and uh, the valves 
it's, it's there's nothing wrong with it. If, if it needs adjusted, it's just it's a maintenance item and needs adjusted. So don't think there's something wrong with it. If it does need adjusted, it just means it's got a little bit more age on it. Uh, I don't even remember how many hours this thing's got on it. It's got 775 hours on it. I do not remember how many hours it had on it when we put those valves on it, but I was still living at home. So that was over probably five or six years ago and we mow a lot with this mower. So. Got the valve covers on, got spark plugs in, so let's fire up, see what she sounds like now. I wish I'd have done it before and after because that is so much more quiet than it was before. Because before it was just a constant tick, 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 tick. And uh, that, is, that is worlds better. Alright guys, that's it. We're done. She runs like a top. She's ready for many more hours of service. Uh, definitely saved us a lot of time and money taking it to the dealer and getting it done there or just another service shop. It's something simple and like I said, doesn't take a lot of tools. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe and share it with your friends if you know anybody that's doing something similar to this. If maybe they've got some questions. And if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.